Hey, welcome back, guys. So today we're gonna just set up a database. Um, so I'm actually gonna be using Docker for this. So if you don't know, Docker is a application that can run applications, and they do it inside of what are called containers, which is basically like a virtual machine except without a lot of all the other extra computer power. It's just gonna be the application. So the application that we're going to be running is Postgres. And to do that, I'm going to be using something called Docker Compose. So I'm just going to be, um, I'm going to create a Docker Compose file. So it's going to be touch, I'm in the right directory, right? Okay, cool. Docker Compose .yaml. All right. So if I remember correctly, um, version is going to be the the version of the YAML file that Docker Compose can understand. Um, I'm going to be using three because I think that's what's standard right now. And it goes a little bit like this. So we're going to define all of our services. And the first one is going to be DB first. No, it's, it's going to be the only one that we're going to have. So we're going to name this container as Postgres and the Docker image that we're going to use is Postgres and I'm going to define the specific version. Um, I did a Docker image list here. So I have both latest and 9.6. Um, I'm going to discreetly define the version just in case um, a new one comes out and latest becomes outdated. So I'm going to do ports and we're going to just do, um, so you can define environment variables like this. I'm going to do database port and then, uh, what is it called? Uh, Postgres's default port is 5432. And, and then we're going to also give it some environment variables so that uh, Postgres has a user. And we're also going to define a uh, environment variable for this. And we're going to add some more. So Postgres DB or database DB, uh, that's going to be the specific database that we're going to try to get into and use for our application. Uh, user and password is pretty straightforward. And then finally, we need to define volumes. And this is just going to be where our data is actually going to live because we don't want it to be inside of the container because it'll be ephemeral in, in case the Docker container goes down, all that data will, will be wiped out. Instead. We're going to save it inside of our server in a directory called PG data. And inside of it's going to be linked to var lib postgresql data, which is the containers um, volume data base data, the data inside of the container. Yeah. All right, and finally, we need to do volumes. And this is just going to uh, make sure that Docker, Docker Compose will create a PG data folder for us. Um, I think we just do that ourselves, actually. Make directory PG data. And everything, all the binary data should live right there. Um, you can also add it to your git ignore. So PG data, because we don't actually want to uh, submit this to Git or save it to Git. Uh, it's just going to be for our local development. And now we can check if it runs. So all we have to do is um, also if you have Docker Compose installed, otherwise you would need to install Docker Compose. But you can just run um, Docker Compose was up and I'm on Linux so I will actually have to run sudo in front of it 
which is kind of annoying, but yeah, whatever. And oh right, we need to add environment variables. So let's do that. Touch environments. Um, and it's also going to be good because this environment variable is going to be shared between our application as well as our database. So let's open that up and let's put it on the side so I remember what these things are called. So database. Okay, so port is obviously going to be 5432 because we want to match the Postgres port uh, just for less confusion. Uh, user, I'll just go with Postgres. And the password is also going to be Postgres. And for the database, I think I'm just going to call it Ness blog. And that should allow us to run Docker. So let's we'll do that again. And I'll create our Postgres image or container, attaching it. And there's there's our Postgres database up and running. All right, now I'm gonna kill this because we actually want to run it in the background. So with the same command, you just add the dash D option um and it'll just be in the background and you could check if you don't know by doing docker container ls and it's there it's a little confusing because it's all stacked on top of each other so there's postgres and there's the name and yeah all right so that's step one uh, step two is to connect our app to our database. So for that, we need a couple things. Um, I, I know that we need type form. Let me check. Uh, we also might need a couple. No, I think we just need type form and then Nest.js type form. So I'm going to do yarn, add type form, as well as Nest.js type form. And let that install. So I actually do forget one thing. So we also need dot env. Oops, yarn add dot env. And then once that's done, we can get started. Okay, so let's go into our actual application now. Um, so here, we want to make sure that our application has access to um, all of our environment variables, and that's what dot env is for. So I'm just going to do dot env slash config. And you'll notice that there's a little thing here saying that we don't have types for it. Uh, I'm not super concerned since uh, what I'm doing is just importing the entire dot env config file. So all of it's just going to run and we're not going to interact with it. So we don't really need the types. I don't know if that's, you know, super safe, but I'm going to go with it. And here we'll do process.env.port. So our application could listen on the port that we list in our environment variable and with the fallback of 4000, um, just in case. And while we're at it, let's actually add that variable. All right, um, so this is going to be so that our, I'm going to do tmux. Uh, this is so our application can actually run, and it will run on port 4000. So if we do a yarn, let's look at our packages. So is it dev or start? Start dev. Start dev it is. And that should run without any warnings uh, once it does. And there you go. Cool. But 
we're gonna do one last thing before the video is over and that is to make sure that it connects to our database uh, correctly so I'm gonna actually create a file called database connection uh, so I do touch in the root of our folder uh, our source directory I mean it's gonna be database connection dot service what is this is this a service yeah it's a service um, and here we're also gonna import some stuff from nest.js so at nest.js common and we're also gonna import a bunch of stuff from at nest.js type form and hopefully that'll give us our auto um, auto imports so we don't have to list them in so injectable and it's going to be export class and I'm going to call it database connection service and it's going to implement type or options factory and it's red right now because we need to actually uh, create this method which returns type form option type form module options and we're just to return and then we're gonna list all of our um, database stuff so name is gonna be default type is Postgres and then everything else we're gonna fill in with environment variables Okay, and one thing you'll all this is red is because of TypeScript. Um, environment variables are they're always read in as strings, so we're gonna coerce this to be a number, and everything's happy. Uh, a couple of options that I've set synchronize to true, so that we don't actually have to go into the database itself and create tables and stuff. Uh, we'll just use Typeform and let it do all the dirty work for us. Uh, drop schema is false. Um, by default, it's false, but I, I know that sometimes we'll, we'll want to clear the database while we're developing, and it's just nice to just go into this file and toggle this on and off when we need to. Logging is just so we know it's working, I guess. And then something tricky is entities. Um, we have to actually check the distribution folder, so the production build, instead of the TypeScript itself. So when it's running, or when the server is running, it creates a build here, and all of these files are what's actually being run. So for the entities, we actually want to look at those files and not the source TypeScript files. And then finally, we just need to attach all of this into our module and load it. Up. So this is going to be a type form module for roots async. And we're going to use, cl use class of database connection service, which I did not spell right. Let's go fix that. So there's an I, E, save this. Moment of truth. Uh, start dev, boop, and that doesn't look good. 
Okay, let's find out why. Um, unable to connect. Postgres package has not been found. Oh. Okay, we need to install the driver. So, yarn add pg. And hopefully that should fix our current problem. Yarn start dev. And there we go. We have a database connection. All right, cool. And this is a good stopping point. So I'm just gonna do git. Um, just gonna check out a new branch for YouTube video one and add everything. Uh, created database connection. All right, cool. I, I'll see you guys next time. I'm not sure what we're going to do. I think we'll definitely tackle data models next. So, yeah. Bye, guys.